Nice to see you again. Thank you. Basically, I've been following your progress on Facebook uh, in, in the last little while. You've been putting a lot of time into Argentina. Yeah. Uh, Ironman coming up and obviously the ultimate goal qualification for Kona. Yeah. But just firstly, tell us how things have been going in terms of the, the build up over the past few months. Are you happy that you are where you want to be a day before departure? Yes, the answer, the overall answer is yes. Um, quietly confident, but um, as goes with my character, I like to rather stay under undercover and then kind of pleasantly surprised on the day. Um, the last few months have been interesting but incredible. Uh, I've walked, uh, I've walked a, weir a, a, a weird but amazing journey with, with the Ironman. Um, I kind of took it seriously over the first few years, um, got my first one done, got all the other ones done and then I kind of ventured off into the more extreme stuff, obviously the comrades running, cycling to comrades, all that kind of stuff, the feel good stuff um, and then in the past I'd say year, um, the dream of Kona kind of sparked again um, and yeah, I, I, I said to myself, I'm going to park everything else and give this the ultimate go uh, as I've never really given myself a chance. Yeah. So I was a little bit selfish over the past few months in terms of training and that's ultimately why I'm sitting here and about to leave for Argentina because I've put in 10 months of solid, the best I've ever trained yeah. by far. And Migs, have you been following your own schedule? I mean, you've, you've been around the block a lot of times. I've been with you on two journeys with Dona Guadja, um and uh, or have you called in uh, outside assistance or, yes. or are you in a position now where you can? So I've always been um, kind of a, a solo athlete. I've trained alone, um, but I've had some guidance over the, say the past two years from Claire Horner and my training day and Kent Horner. Um, but they've actually at times called me the stubborn athlete because I've, I've wanted to do comrades. I've wanted to do all the other things, but I've also wanted to go to Kona. And they've sat me down and said, it's one, it, you need to decide. Kona's a, a serious commitment. Uh, if you want to race an Ironman, which they know I can, I've got the potential to race an Ironman, we need to box clever. So they said, give us, give us the months of undivided attention. Um, and I've, Claire's coached me to a point now where I'm fitter than I've ever been, I'm stronger than I've ever been. And she's, I can't thank her enough to be dead honest. She's been monumental in, in terms of staying healthy, I haven't been sick. Yeah. haven't been injured um, and just as I say we had a benchmark of overall fitness where we wanted to be and uh, between you and I we've overshot that mark I'm fitter than I've ever been okay. and, that's, and I've been fit before <laughs> yeah yeah that's amazing and obviously uh, your your better half Roz yeah. uh, she's must have been a huge pillar of support for you yeah I'll never forget my first Ironman I sat Roz down and I told her I want to do this thing called Ironman and we decided that it's a commitment for both um, and that's, that's ultimately fair and now we are with attempting number seven um, and they've all been different in their own way but this one's been, it's been taxing on life, you know, it's, it takes, it's, it's two, some, two, sometimes three times a day, um, eating right, just, uh, it's, it's been mostly about me, uh, so it is a partnership but if there's one supporter I would ever have next to me on race day build up to race day after race day it's her she's in, she simply knows what to do when to do it and how to do it it's been incredible mm. and i think it's um yeah as i say she's she's invested a lot so we're looking forward to hopefully reaping the rewards if it doesn't happen we'll both know we we couldn't have done more mm. what ultimately do you need to to qualify um at this point i mean we've got uh, we've got plans in in uh, in our head of times i mean anywhere between 9, 10, and 9, 30 would be ideal. And if you look at history of Mar del Plata or Argentina, um, we're gonna need to be somewhere around there to be in contention. We, we don't know until the day after, until the results have come in. I mean, I could have my best day I've ever raced and there could be some guys that are just better on the day. But we're looking at about a 9.20 to 9.30 Ironman, uh, which will put us well in contention in the 30 to 34 age group. The guy who won the age group last year did 9.16 but he's just done Kona now and he did a 9-10 so, and he's coming back so okay. you've got a, you know, you've got an epic game but a good day for me, um, I'm a runner a through and through, I'm a, very, I'm a strong biker but I'm a runner and my running now is the best it's ever been so I'll be trying to play Pac-Man on the run I think that's ultimately what the plan is, so the swim will be solid, the bike will be I've put a lot of work into my bike um, the bike will just be keeping myself in contention 
and not over biking and on the run it's then it's uh, if i have any legs on the run that's where i'm gonna that's where i'm either gonna go to Kona or not go to Kona. okay Megs, best of luck and i look forward to sitting here after argentina and hopefully <laughs> discussing uh, the continuation of the road to kona it's gonna be um yeah it's gonna be special and i also hope so we've had the last two years um south africa hasn't had a 30 to 34 age group guy at kona for various reasons and i, I hope to be the first one to qualify this year for next year um, and represent the country at kona next year it'll be a dream country that's been for about 12 years now